So, are you going to verbalize stuff to me, or? This time it's in method, so. Okay, so do you want me to go there, or do you want to uh, go there and read problems to me? Uh, I should be all logged out, so um, if you could go there, that'd be great. <clears throat> yeah, I remember we had a little bit of difficulty last time. Uh, rather than me calling it up, what's your username and password? Games.andrews1212. At gmail.com. Never thought it'd be easier to type than <laughs> copy and paste, but what's the password? Uh, capital Airplane. And uh, the E is going to be lowercase. Just that? Capital Airplane E? And then two twelves after that. It says invalid login. I'll just sign it on mine then to make it easier. Yeah. Uh, I do have that your name and password stored. Be Go ahead and sign in and I'll take a quick peek as to why that didn't work. Let's see. Where is that? That's on my documents. I had james.andrews1212 at gmail, airplane, ah, I put a capital E on the end of airplane, and then I put a oh. little E. Are, are the problems we're going to be doing, are they graphical in nature? In other words, are, there, are they going to be such that you can verbalize them to me? Uh, it's going to be a little bit of both. It's a review of chapter 11. Let's do all the verbal ones first, and any ones that require me to look at a graph, I'll log in. Okay. Let's try that, since we have a limited amount of time. But I, I see where I made my mistake with the password. Okay. All right. What's the first one we can do? The first one is 3t plus 3 divided by t minus 4 and then times parentheses t2 minus t T2, you mean T squared? Uh, yes, yeah, sorry, T squared. Okay. Minus 12. Like that? Uh, in the parentheses, sorry. Mm, I'm still confused. Where's the minus 12 go? Oh, in the parentheses. Oh, okay, now I get it. All right. What is your first inclination when you see a quadratic like that? To uh, factor it. Okay. Let's do so. Factoring is a skill you are going to need no matter how far you go in math. So... If we have to spend a whole session one day just factoring, we should. It's that okay. important. Okay? And I kind of have my own unique method that I teach students to factor, but this is a simple factoring problem. 
Because, and I call it simple because t squared has a 1 in front of it, not any other number. So immediately I can do a t there and a t there, and immediately I can choose my signs. Both of them are opposite. And the rest of it is very simple. Factors of 12 that subtract to the coefficient of the middle term, which is 1. So what factors of 12 subtract to the number 1? Um, let's see, 12 times 1 is, or negative 12 times 1 is negative 12, but that wouldn't. Always start with the factors that are closest together. That's your most likely answer. So what, okay. what factors are very close together of 12? Uh, 4 and 3. Ah, 4 and 3 subtract to the number 1. Right. So we definitely have a 4 and a 3. Now you have to decide whether the 4 goes with the negative sign or the positive sign. 4 is going to go with the negative. Yeah, the bigger of those factors has to go with the sign of the middle term. The middle term is negative. Therefore, we get the middle term by subtract or by multiplying the inside and the outside and then adding them together. And in this case, the only way that can be equal to minus t is if the 4 goes with the negative sign. All right, so I'm going to erase this, and I'm going to put t plus 3 times t minus 4. And now what can I do? Now you can, or you would find a common denominator over that, right? No, 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 no. This is the problem here. In other words, I have this multiplied by that numerator and divided by this. I can just make one giant fraction. You can cancel out the t minus 4? There you go. That's the secret. And now I have 3t plus 3 times t plus 3. What's that? Uh, 3t squared plus 9t and then plus 3t plus 9. Simplify. 3t squared plus oh, 9. 12 plus well, 12 9t. 12p. 12t T. plus 9. And that's your answer. Now, if they tell you that that's wrong because you need to put it in factored form, let me know. It said it was wrong. Does it give you a reason? It says, although your answer is equal to the correct answer, it is not in the correct form. Okay. So, let's see what we can do with this answer. At a minimum, I can factor out a 3, right? Now I notice that that also is a factorable quadratic. Both signs have to be plus, and the factors are 3 and 1. Put that answer in. And it accepted that one. Yeah. Notice what's happened here. We, we've run into this problem before. 
And that is, is that Math Excel wants all answers factored. They prefer this factored form than they did the completely multiplied out form, which tells right. you something. It tells you that when you end up with an answer that's already factored, don't multiply it together. In other words, you need to go the other direction. They want everything in factored form. Okay. Okay. So let's Sense. let's keep that in mind as we go forward. What else do you have? Um 7s plus 21 Uh, divided by S plus 3 over 4. That's it? Yep. Factor the top. So we could take a 7 out of that, so that would be 7. Let's add a parentheses uh, S plus 3. Now, how do I divide by a fraction? You have to find the common denominator. Uh, or no, wait. You, uh, that's when fraction. you're adding or subtracting fractions. When you're you can dividing by a fraction, it's much easier than that. Because all you have to do is flip and multiply. That's much, much easier than finding a least common denominator. Adding, right. and adding and subtracting is harder than multiplying and dividing. Multiplying and dividing fractions is really a piece of cake. If I want to multiply one-third by two-fifths, it's easy. It's two-fifteenths. But if I wanted to add those two together, that would be a much harder problem. Right. Because then i got to go through all kinds of manipulations. So I'm dividing by a fraction which means I'm going to multiply by what? The reciprocal. So the opposite, or not the op, yeah, the opposite of that. You said it right the first time, the reciprocal. It's not really the opposite, it's the reciprocal. Reciprocal. Uh-huh. It's where you just flip the numerator and the denominator. That's what reciprocal means. Now notice what happens. You can cross out the S plus 3. Yeah. And my answer is 28. Yep. That was right. Okay. Now, at this point, if you have enough problems to do the next 20 minutes that you can verbalize, mm -hmm. let's just go ahead and do it. If not, if you're looking at problems where they give you a graph or something that has to be interpreted, I can log back in. But you'll have to log out and I'll have to log in. So right. I'll let you be the judge. There were some graphs on this homework assignment, mm -hmm. but I've already finished those and I got all of those right. So it's okay. more my stronger area. Well, let's finish then with you verbalizing these. Okay. There, I guess we can't do that one. Um, These ones that you're giving me now are are good. They're just complicated algebra is all. Right. You just have to know the method that you're going to use to solve them. And it almost always involves factoring, canceling, flipping the denominator and multiplying, things like that. Sometimes finding a common denominator but only if you're adding or subtracting fractions do you have to find a common denominator. Right. Um. Okay, here's one. X plus 1 divided by X squared plus 6X plus 8, and then that fraction added to 3 divided by x squared plus 6x 
plus 8. Okay. This is an easy problem. Uh, what do we do? First step. So first we factor the denominator. Hold on. What is true about both denominators? They're the same, so they should come out to be the same. You don't need to factor. factor them. I mean, you can, but let's, let's do that as the next step. In other words, okay. if our goal is to add these two fractions, we have a common denominator. Let's go ahead and operate on the numerator and be done with it. So then it would be x plus 4. Now, it's possible that one of the factors of the denominator might be x plus 4. And even if it isn't, they're going to want their answer in completely factored form. So right. now we want to go ahead and factor the denominator. In case, well, like I said, whether it is x plus 4 or not, we're going to want to give the answer in factored form. We already know that your math Excel wants everything in fact. If you can have a quadratic that can be factored, do it. How do you factor x squared plus 6x plus 8? Uh, you find what can multiply into 8 and add to 6, so that would be 4 and 2, x plus 4 and x plus 2. And then it's right here, I don't know how to enter it, and my test is in math Excel. Okay. And well, first I don't of all, know what can I do next? You can cross out the x plus 4s. Yeah, which leaves 1 over x plus 2. But let's be real clear about something. These two are not the same thing. Here, let me, let me write it a little bit better. They look like they're the same thing, right? In other words, it's all I did was divide top and bottom by x plus 4. But the fact of the matter is, is that there are domain restrictions on that. Do you know what domain name means? Uh, yeah, sort of. It's what x can be. Well, x normally can be most anything. But in this particular case, there are two values that x absolutely cannot be. What are they? They can't be x plus, it can't be negative 2 and negative 4. Okay. So that x makes, cannot yeah. be negative 4, x cannot be negative 2. Now notice that once I cancel them out and I'm looking at this, it looks like the only thing x can't be is negative 2. But not true. This domain restriction still holds. Just because we've canceled it out doesn't mean anything. What it means is that when I go to graph this, I have a hole at negative 4. And that's exactly what it's called, is a hole. Okay. A hole? A hole. Yeah, I might have uh, uh, per, uh, something that looks like this. But at negative 4, I'm going to have a hole in the graph right there because x cannot be equal to negative 4. Now, it cannot be equal to negative 2, and there will be a vertical asymptote at negative 2 reflecting that, but the vertical asymptote got replaced by the whole when I canceled out the x plus 4 divided by x plus 4. Now, as to whether or not you've been taught all of this or you're supposed to be able to do this, I'm not sure. I'm going to be curious. Go ahead and try putting this in as an answer, 1 over x plus 2. Okay. See what they say, whether they ask you about domain. I accepted it, Math Excel. And that's it? Yeah, for that, that right. one, yeah. So in terms of math Excel, they're saying these two expressions are equal. But just for your future algebra, you should know they're not.
So, okay. Okay, because this expression over here, x cannot be equal to minus 4 and x cannot be equal to minus 2 because you cannot divide by 0. But notice in this expression here, and the only thing that makes the denominator 0 is x equal to minus 2. So you would think that now the only restriction is x can't be minus 2. But it's not true. You have to go all the way back to the original function. This is the original function. And in the original function, x cannot be either minus 4 or minus 2. It's probably something you'll learn you know, I don't know if you'll learn it till Algebra 2 or you'll learn it in Algebra 1. But at some point in Algebra, they'll address that. The fact that the okay. two are close to the same but different domains. Okay, that makes some it, it makes sense, but it's my brain still wants it to see it as equal. Yeah, it's a hard thing to accept. Um, let me give you another example. x minus 1 over x squared minus 1. Well, if I factor the bottom, that's the difference of perfect squares. So it factors like that. Okay. Now you can see that the x minus 1 is going to cancel with this x minus 1. So it's going to look like this. And if you only looked at this, you would say, well, x cannot be equal to minus 1, but it should be able to be equal to everything else. But not so. In other words, if we look at this, x cannot be equal to 1 or minus 1. And this is the restriction on the domain even when it gets into that format. In other words, if I gave you this thing on the right, circled, and I said, what's the domain restriction? You would say, well, only x can't be equal to minus 1. Mm -hmm. right? If right. you were looking at that all on its own, that's the only restriction on domain. x cannot be equal to minus 1. But when it comes about by this one, we have to pay attention what the domain restrictions were from the very beginning. And that's these two down here. It not only cannot be equal to minus 1, it also cannot be equal to plus 1. Okay, that, that helps a little bit more. Whenever you have a factor that gets canceled, you create what's called a hole. And a hole looks just like I've described it. It's like a spot right there on the graph. Now, if you put it into a calculator, it doesn't show you the hole. And the reason it doesn't is because this point is infinitesimally small. One is merely one point on an infinite number of points between zero and two. So it is so small that the hole would never show up. <laughs> no matter how much you magnified it. You could zoom in a million times and you wouldn't see that hole. But the fact is, is that x cannot be equal to 1. And that's why that hole shows up in the curve. Which means that y can never be equal to whatever that value is. In other words, I can't just plug 1 into this and say, well, y would be 1 half, which is true, but if x can never be 1, y can never be 1 half. And the y values are range. You have domain and you have range. Domain is all of the allowable values that x can take on. Range is all of the allowable values that y can take on. Well, isn't x the input, kind of like the domain is the input, and y the range is the output? Let's look at this function. What's the domain? 1. What are the allowable values for x? 
Well, that could be actually, could actually any be real number. One. It could be any real number. No, can't be negative. Has to be greater than or equal to zero because you cannot take the square root of a negative number. Okay. Okay, so that's a restriction on what x can be. So this is the domain. And if I'm looking at range, what are the allowable values that y can be? Well, notice that y also has to be greater than or equal to zero. Because if I put a number in here that's greater than or equal to zero, the square root of it is going to be positive always. Mm -hmm. so both domain and range have a similar restriction. They both have to be positive. If I were to graph that function, it would look like this. Notice that the x values are only positive and the y values are only positive. Doesn't go below the x-axis or to the left of the y-axis. That's how you get domain and range, is by trying to figure out what are the allowable values for x and what are, what's the range of the y values. A lot of times y will go from negative infinity to positive infinity, or x will. In other words, if I look at a relatively simple function like this, just a quadratic, that's a parabola. What's the domain? It'd be any number greater than zero. Or no. Domain, look at the x-axis only. Okay. It can be any, so right? It can, this goes to negative infinity if I were to carry it, draw it big enough. So my domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. But the all domain all can't be negative. Numbers. Yes, it can. I can put a negative value in for x, and it doesn't bother me a bit. If I put negative 2 in there, negative 2 squared is 4. So my x values can be any number whatsoever. doesn't have to be only because it's squared. It can be anything. But once I square it, y is always positive. And you can see from the graph that y is always positive, right? So y, the range, remember the y equals range, is greater than or equal to zero. y is the one that's never negative with this function. But x can only be negative if there's an exponent, right? No, look, look at the because function. If that, well, let's because if sure that squared wasn't shared. Make sure you understand this. This is pretty big x is any value along the x-axis. Well, I can pick minus 2. That gives me a y of that. I can pick minus 4. That gives me a y of that. I can pick plus 3. That gives me a y of that. I can pick plus 100. And that gives me a y somewhere way up there. Notice, I can pick any x value I want. I can pick 0, and that gives me a y of 0. So y can go all the way down to 0, but notice y never goes below the x-axis, which is to say that it never goes negative. Because oh. regardless of what number you pick for x, whether it's plus or minus, when I square it, it becomes plus. Take another example. This is such an important principle that it may actually supersede your need um, to do these problems. Uh, let me think of one. I know you haven't had a lot of trig, but you've had some. Mm -hmm. That's the sine curve. That's y equals sine x goes up to 1, goes down to minus 1, 
That's it. It just oscillates between minus 1 and 1. What's the domain? What are the allowable values for x? Anything greater than negative 1. Equal to or greater than. No, you're looking at the wrong thing. When I say, when I talk about domain, look at the x-axis. Is there any value that x cannot be? No, actually. No, all real numbers. So the domain is all real numbers, sometimes written like that. It can be negative infinity. It can be positive infinity. It can be 2. It can be 10. It can be minus 17. X can be anything. Where the restriction is, is on the range. What can y be, according to my graph? It can be negative 1 or greater than. Negative 1 to 1. Right. And I put brackets around it because it can be negative 1 and it can be 1. If it couldn't be either of those, if it just approached them, I would put parentheses around it. But when I use brackets, it means it can be 1. It's 1 right there. And it can be negative 1. It's negative 1 right there. But it's never 1.2 or 1.3. And it's never minus 3 or minus 4. It's always between minus 1 and 1. Because when I talk about range, I'm talking about the vertical range what mm -hmm. it can be vertically. Domain is always what it can be horizontally. Range is what it can be vertically. And understanding that concept will take you a long way in al algebra. Um, let's see, it's 5 o'clock. Unfortunately, James, I do have a 5 o'clock, so I'm going to have to run. So we okay. have the problem of me having to log into your account, but uh, I, I don't know. I think that'll be helpful, what we did today, even if it wasn't exactly pertaining to your problem. All right. I'll talk to you later. Sounds good. Bye. Bye-bye.